Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to build a, a unit test for an existing Java class. Now I have a very simple class that I've built. It has four private variables, first name, last name, age, tax rate. It has a default constructor, it has a parameterized constructor, it's got setters and getters, and it's got a get initials function that returns back the initials. Now a couple of these are intentionally messed up so that I can demonstrate how the tests fail. So when you're building unit tests, unit tests test parts of the project. They don't test the project as a whole, they test individual parts. So you'd build a unit test for get tax rate, you'd get a unit test for get first name. You'd build a unit test to test each one of the individual parts of your project. Not in the whole, but individually. You'd be checking this if each individual part works. You heard the phrase, the um, sum of the parts is greater than the whole. That's what this is. You're summing up all the parts of the project and testing them. So we'll come down here to class my test outputs, and I'll create a new file, a new file here. So I'm gonna need a couple imports, and if you don't remember what they are, you can come back here, org.junits. Okay, this will give us my annotations. This will also give us all the asserts that we need. Um, this is definitely something we need to import. Now we're gonna write a test for each one of these guys. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, and this is optional, I'm gonna start by creating a static variable of type person. Please note that my package here, that's real important, it's kind of off key here, my package here matches there, otherwise this fails. So I'm creating a global variable. What I'm doing here is I'm going to allow me to use this class variable throughout each one of my tests. You don't have to do this. You can instantiate the test within each class. You can instantiate the class within each test. It's your call. I'm doing it here to save me some time. I'll also show you a new annotation. App before and app before class. App before run before each test. App before class will run before the whole test. So app before class will force this function to run before all of my tests. It's really helpful for opening files, connecting to databases, whatever it is you need to have working before you work through the test. So I'll set some fake name here. Okay, so I've set it, and you do whatever you need to in this setup class. Now we need to test, and this gets tedious, and you, you want to test every part of this class. You want to make sure your setters work, your getters work, your constructors work. Yes, it's a lot of work, but at the end of the video, I'll show you a quick way to at least get it set up. Okay, so do something to write a test for each one of these. At test is the annotation, what follows it? Couple things to point out. Notice I made the setup class static. It has to be static because you only want it to run one time. Uh, the person up here is static, so that's setup class and access it, but it doesn't need to be static down here. They all do have to be public or else JUnit won't run them. So in order to set up your tests, and every one of your tests is going to set up in basically the same way, you're going to have an expected variable, an action variable, and then you're going to run some tests. Now, getting the actual variable could take some work, but this is the basic logic. So again, the basic logic is expected. So my expected va value is Joe because that's what I passed it. 
actual is what I get out of the class. So this now actually goes into my class and uses the getter to pull out what the first name is. So this will see if this set first name actually works. Now you have to be very careful. If you screw up your expected, your test will fail. So you know, copy and paste values are out. Also create easy expected and actuals for your first couple tests. Now we need to compare this. The assert functions will allow you to do all of your testing. You see there's a bunch of them. I'm going to use assert equals here. And there are two versions of assert equals. One with a string, one without. I like the one with a string. So it wants some type of message. So what like, I'd like to put here is testing. What it is in testing. The expected value is Joe. The actual value is what we get back. Alright, so it's test this. Right click your Maven. Test. Let it chug, and look at that, it passed. Now, it ran two tests. I only have one test here. When we used Maven to build the project, it automatically gave me app test, which automatically does this assert true. You can ignore that, because your Surefire reports will denote app test, person test. But if you wish to turn off a test, don't delete them. Use the ignore annotate. Now the ignore annotate will turn off this particular test. So I'm going to delete all these Surefire reports over here just so you can prove that it's there. See, there's no Surefire reports there. I'm just going to delete this one, these two as well. There's probably a more efficient way to do that. So I'll rerun my test. One test run, only person test. So you can throw this ignore anytime you want. So if you have a test that you just know is just bombed or crapping out, or that you know you don't need to test anymore, ignore it. Okay, so we've tested our first name and it passes. Now a good software developer will test everything. So I'm going to test get age. And again, the same setup. And expect a variable. And then assert it. Again, I like the three one. Let's see what we get. So let's run this test. What? It fails? Uh oh, two runs fail. Now take a look at this output. Testing get age. My message expected 424, but got 84. Well, I got an error up here. So here I screwed up my test. Let's save, rerun it again. I'll, people that are paying attention probably already know this is a mistake anyway. Let's rerun the test. Expected 42, but was 84. Now, clearly that's wrong. Something's wrong with my getter or my setter or something. So I need to go find this. Now, in the workforce, you have one of two solutions here. Either A, you fix the problem. Sometimes quality assurance are required to fix it. Or B, you report the problem and let the original programmer fix it. Both are common. Now, if you're the original programmer and you're the tester, well, guess what? You're fixing it. Well, let's take a quick look. Come over here to person. And let's look at my setter for age. Set age. Ah, set age is the problem. Look at that. For some reason, I'm doubling it times two. So let's comment that. Get rid of that. Then come that I changed it.
and now let's run our test again. Look at that. Passes. All right, so we've written two tests. Now, you have to write one for every one of these objects, or at least every one of the objects you care about testing. Now, personally, I test everything. It's tedious. Yeah. But it's not impossible. You write an at test for it, and each one is expected, actual, and assert. So I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to show you the quick way. They're almost going to break this one. They have to be public. Show you what happens if they're not public, or if you get any other error in your code. So. Can't return the string to an int. All right, so let's run this thing. Let's run my test. Right-click test. Okay, I have an error. Tell me that right here. It also tells me what the error is. Method test initial should be public. Oh, it's not. So make it public. I'll run it again. Now, I like this. There was an error in the test. Now, instead of the whole project just dying, Maven just ignored the erroneous test. It still ran the other ones. Now, one thing you can't do is control the order of the tests that they run. Even though they're in this order, you can't easily control that. Maven's going to run the test in whatever order Maven runs. If you need stuff run before others, that's where the annotations at before and at four class come into play. So tests, no error, three tests run, run failure, what's my failure? Expected uppercase JS, but got lowercase JS. Hmm, that's weird. Come over and look, look at that. I did lower instead of upper. So now you would fix this. If you're the original developer, you change the lower to uppercase. If you're not, you ask the original developer, are our initials supposed to be capped or not? Because you don't want to make an assumption. Maybe they lowercase on a purpose. Maybe this is a Linux box and, you know, case is real important. But you've now found an error and you flag it. Okay. One more. I forgot I need to show you the doubles. What I pass into this? 1.05. Now, these are doubles, and here's a little difference. Four things pop in here. You know, the message is the same it's been, the expected and the actual are the same that it's been. The delta is the degree of change. Or basically how far if it could be off. So imagine you're calculating a percentage and you expect it to be 39.6. It comes out as 39.7. If you have a delta of 0.1, you're okay. And I'll show you that here. So I'm going to put a 0.01 here and we'll see what happens with test tax rate. Right now it should pass. Because 105, I didn't do anything hinky with tax rates. Four tests, one failure, probably still the initials. Yes, the initials. All right, so we have our tax rate. And it's a 1.5, and this test will run. I hit the wrong button. 
So that test will run and that test will pass. As long as I'm within point 0.1, and, you know, it's a bordered by point 0.1, so point 1.06 will fail. But if I do 1.05, say 1 or 2, that's within a point 0.1 change. This should pass. Yes, one failure. So this delta allows you to change and have a little bit of leeway with your um, your doubles. Okay, so last thing, I promise, the quick way to pull this off. If you have four or five dozen class variables with all of those setters and getters and specialized functions, generating these tests by hand is tedious. I'm going to go back to my class. And I click inside my class somewhere. I'm going to right-click my class. I'm going to do source action. I'm going to generate tests. It's going to generate for me a file called person test.java. And I'm able to pick whatever I want. So I've already done age and first name. So I'm going to do L name, tax rates, anything I want. I'll just set it all. Hit OK. And over here in person test now, the stuff they had there is still there. And now they generate a whole bunch of other tests for me. The ones that I already had are repeated. But you have a variety of at tests. When you run these, all those tests will run, but they're empty. So now you can come back in and fill these. So all that did was quickly generate your test file for you. Yeah. And if you don't like the name, you can give it another name. That's right here when you do source action, generate test. Whatever you put up here will be the name of this file. All right, so you've learned how to, to generate tests. You've learned how to set up a before class. Um, there's also an at after class. That'll run after your class. So if you open a file, you close it in your after class. If you connect to a database, you disconnect in your after class. It sets up just like before class. You've learned how to use ignore, the annotate and ignore, which stops a test from running. And you've learned how to work a simple test by creating expected variable, an action variable, and then run the assert. All right. Good luck to you.